Hello, good evening everyone and welcome to our international free webinar. So I am your host, Umme Salma, Head of Ambassador of IGP. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to be you associated with IGP as a global member. I feel honored and privileged to host this webinar. It's my delight to welcome you all to Institution of Global Professionals free webinar. Thank you all for joining us in today's marvelous evening and it is my humble request to you all and pleasure to you all for you stay with us till the end. For I am sure you all will have many takers and also pay away from this webinar. I coach that wisdom comes from age, not from education and learning and learning. And there is no age for learning because life never stop teaching anything you learn today. You will get better results tomorrow. So never stop learning anything and IGP is the best learning platform to you empower your French for knowledge and wisdom. Um, in this evening, we have something, some new participants joining with us in every day. Therefore, let me give you a little briefing about the IGP. IGP, so student and community is just providing holistic social work and education to create a professional generation. We believe that it is not effective to one school just by acquiring formal education. So we have to acquire skill and also gain the skill. Uh, so IGP is an educational institute which provides social work which is globally recognized. We organize our webinar, training, offline and online courses by best and training speaker and courses to all over the world. So IGP is a uh, learning platform for you all and our mission is to empower people and enhance skills. I feel elated to announce we have already completed 99 webinars successfully. I expect that, that you all will be enlightened by our numerous today and wisdom you will bring today will help in your professional and personal growth. I extend my best wishes for the great success of the past participant and this that you all will remain with us for a long, fruitful association and journey. I extend my deepest gratitude in welcoming you all to this session with in our 100th webinar on uh, global on topic on global leadership forum, which indeed interesting topic and as my knowledge is concerned, I feel that leadership is very, very important for us. Uh, so, well, the audience, this is just a drop in the ocean, and I think that topic will be dealt in detail today by our eminent honorable four speaker, dignified uh, honorable four speaker. First speaker is Dr. Sharmila Ramjawan, Dr. Saf Brugzi, Dr. Uh, Amit uh, Arod, Adobe, Adobe Mem, and Dr. Rita. Uh, so, uh, without any further ado, let's start the magnifying event with IGP's mantra, feed your skill and with innovation inspire and impact. For you, ladies and gentlemen, to meet our first speaker, Dr. Sharmila. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Oh, sorry. Uh, today we want to show a uh, video on something new. So let's see.
Wow, we completed 100 webinars. And thank you all to my all lovely audience because we cannot reach this state without you all. Happy celebration. So all this free webinar just for you all and because our mission is to empower people, enhance skill and build professional generation. So let's start our program with IGP's mantra, feed your skill. It's time to invite our uh, first speaker, Dr. Sharvila. So let's welcome, please give welcome to our first speaker, Dr. Sharvila. Hello, ma'am. Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever in the world you are right now. I'm so humbled and overjoyed to be on this 100th webinar. Congratulations to the Instant, uh, Institution of Global Professionals, and thank you so much for having me today. Thank you so much, ma'am, because your contribution is uh, so much important for us. I truly appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, now, it's just over to you. I'm going to share my screen, so please bear with me. So I'm going to take you through my journey as the Founder, CEO of Famlim Solutions. Famlim Solutions is a marketing company in South Africa. We tailor make marketing, brand positioning, and CSI solutions for businesses, and we deliver on promise. And that I can say as a global leader that we do de deliver on promise. And you will see from my presentation that I go through today, and you will see my leadership as a global icon that I'm going to take you through on my journey. So I am Dr. Shamila Ramjawan. Um, I'm the founder of Bam Ram Solutions and the Princess D Menstrual Cup. And I and the rest of my staff, we are changing the lives of many girls and women on a global platform. So who is Shamila? I am the founder owner of the Bam Ram Solutions, a marketing company, the founder of the Princess D Menstrual Cup, a sustainable solution for menstruation. And I'm gonna take you through that as well because I think it's going to really intrigue the audience to see exactly what the Princess D Menstrual Cup is and how it is changing the lives of girls and women on a global scale. I'm a global talk show host. Um, I founded this talk show in August last year during COVID-19 and it's called the Red Corner Show. I'm also a business management lecturer at the University of South Africa. I am Mrs. Johannesburg 2019, a pageant title owner, and that is Beauty with a Purpose. It's because of my community work across the globe. And not forgetting that I'm a mom to two beautiful children. A chairperson for Ladies of All Nations International South Africa, the chairperson for Africa for the Global International Alliance USA, the country director, national president, for South Africa, for the International Youth Society. I'm also an author, actor, and a reality star. So I'm gonna take you through some of my accolades and it just means so much to me being recognized on a global scale in terms of my leadership. And that is the topic that we're going to discuss today on leadership. And I think I just wanna showcase some of my skills and accolades where I achieved this and earned this through the work that I do across the globe. So I'm not going to go too much into detail in all of them, but I'll just touch on some of them. Um, so this was the start of my career in 2016 when I launched the Princess D Menstrual Cup and being recognized for my work in communities and making a societal impact in the lives of girls and women. And I was actually recognized for what I've been doing in the communities. So in 2017, I was recognized by Champion South Africa as the champion of the week in July in South Africa, nominated in the Standard Bank Top Women Entrepreneur Award, nominated in the Business Women's Association Awards in the Social Entrepreneur category, finalist in the Top Performing Entrepreneur 2017 in the National Business Awards, and my very first global award. 
Center for Economic and Leadership Development Global Female Leadership Impact Awards, which I attended and received in Dubai. I was inducted into the Hall of Fame and I was featured in the special edition of the Amazon's Watch magazine as the top 100 most influential women in emerging economies globally. 2018 Women of Stature Awards, I won the Entrepreneur of the Award of the Year in South Africa, the Oliver Empowerment Awards, Entrepreneur of the Year finalist, Women Economic Forum, a global awardee, where I attended in New Delhi, and the award was conferred in April 2018, and the Rotary Club Paul Harris nominee in 2018, the Seven Percent Tribe Stained City, one of 40 honorees, and the Ladies of All Nations International Loan in Morocco that I attended and also attained an award there. 2019, as you can see, I just grew with accolades and being recognized for my work globally. African Leadership Persons of the Year induction into the CEO's Hall of Fame, Humanitarian Award as the Miss India Gauteng Pageant, recognized as a Pan-African Awards Most Influential Women in Business, Country Winner, Black Management Forum Manager of the Year 2019. And then this is something so close to my heart. I was one of eight drivers for season one, a reality show, a docuseries that was recorded in October 2019. And the theme was A Million Dreams for the Win, Win, Wins. I spent 21 days in a tent, ate plant-based food, fundraising and honoring community projects in Swellendam in the Western Cape, South Africa. And this reality show will be screened on Netflix and the whole world can see it sometime towards the end of this year or early next year. Moving on to 2020, the best humanitarian award, UK, the Red Blaze of Excellence, an honorary doctorate in humanitarianism from the GIA. And for me, this stands out because I can now get to use the title as a doctor, appointed as chairperson for South Africa by the Global International Alliance, GIA, one of 35 women globally for the prestigious Crown Award from the USA, one of 30 influential women in South Africa and a global change maker. Going on to 2020, it's been a massive year, although we experienced COVID. Women Appreciating Women Award, 100 Successful, successful Women in Business with the uh, GTC, and that was Miami in 2020, and I received that award again. One of 30 global women recognized for International Women's Day by the NGO Whisperer, one of eight global visionary leaders by Ladies of All Nations International, she inspires me award UK. And in 2021, the Princess Peace Award Future Leaders Entity Egypt Loni UK identified as one of 30 humanitarians for 2021 by C.D. Wilson, appointed as a country director of South Africa for the International Youth Society and the International Youth Society. They have a representation in over 149 countries and I'm also the national president for South Africa for the IYS, 100 successful women in business for the GTC Miami and global ambassador for the Commonwealth Entrepreneurs Club, the CEC. So you most probably wondering why I've taken you through my accolades, but I think as a global leader and icon, I think it's um, very humbling to showcase what I've achieved and being recognized because I think most of the time when we work so hard and we put all our strength and energy into what we do and our business, we don't recognize ourselves. And it's really humbling for other people across the globe to recognize the work that we're doing and changing the lives of people. So my core business is the Princess D Menstrual Cup. So having worked with communities for over a decade, I realized there was a need to research the Menstrual Cup. In 2016, I launched my own product after research, and currently it's in 20 countries, 50 pharmacies in South Africa, and I've changed the lives of thousands of schoolgirls across the globe. And in South Africa, we've done over 350 girls now. So I'm just going to briefly take you through the menstrual cup because I think a lot of people don't know what it is. And it's really important that we know, you know, we need to inform people and tell people exactly what it is because we know girls must school for five to seven days a month and they don't have a sustainable solution during menstruation. And my main project is keeping girls in school. So, you know, this picture tells a story. Every day can be a good day if girls can attend school during their period. And we have to look after our leaders of tomorrow. 
So the main project aim was to provide disadvantaged girls in rural areas to assist them with their menstruation and help them manage it during that time of the month. So the menstrual cup is an ideal solution, which lasts up to 12 hours at a time. It's reusable for 10 years, and it can hold as three times as much liquid as a normal sanitary product. So I've done lots of activations and handovers across the globe, and I'm just going to show you some of the lives that have changed. So it's ideal for girls and women that are differently abled. It's retail on shelves in pharmacies and health shops. It's recommended by doctors and prescribed by doctors as well. And it's so overwhelming when we actually hand over this product to girls and we get the, the good news stories. So this is what the product looks like. And this is the package. It, you get a menstrual cup, you get a sterilizer cup, and you get that in a satin bag. So the benefits of the menstrual cup, I'm not going to take you too much into this, but if anybody wants me to share information or would like a copy of the presentation, I'm happy to share that. And also, if you follow me on all social media platforms, you'll be able to get all the information that I'm talking about now and more. It's very easy to fold because when people see a menstrual cup, they think, how am I going to use this? But it's very easy to fold. There's various folds. And there's a lot of information on our social media platforms as well. So you fold and you insert it like a tampon and it just collects your menstrual flow. To release it, you just wash your hands, you release the, you pinch the bottom of the stem and you just gently remove it and pull it in a vertical direction and you empty into a toilet or wash basin and that's it. You rinse and you reinsert and that's basically how you actually use a menstrual cup. It's very important to wash your hands at all times and make sure that your hands are clean because we are talking about a very sensitive area. And the advantages or the most important is that schoolgirls can use this and go to school and they wouldn't be embarrassed by the boys with messy dresses or not being able to play sport because with the menstrual cup, it's so comfortable that they will not be feeling anything and they will be able to actually participate in sporting activities. And then it comes with the sterilizer cap. And this is our niche offering where we actually provide a girl with a menstrual cup and a sterilizer cup. And all you need is 250 mils of boiling water that you immerse your cup in boiling water for 10 minutes and it's sterilized and then it's ready for next month. So it's a one-stop solution for girls for 10 years. And then we have the various colors of the sterilizer cap because we like to make it pretty for girls. And uh, so I've come up with this and it's a great innovation. So basically, this is what a girl would get. She would get a menstrual cup, a sterilizer cup, a structural leaflet and that in a satin bag. So we actually need to invest in our school girls. And as I said previously, they are leaders of tomorrow. So we have to ensure that we keep them in school during menstruation. And we can only do this if we partner with other people. We get organizations, sponsors, and funders on board to help us do the activations and provide for our school girls. Because we do know that school girls in rural communities, they have nothing to use during menstruation. They use feathers, leaves, pages from their textbooks. They use cow dung. Um, where they actually wet it, roll it, and use it as a sanitary pad, and they get infections from that. And we don't want that for our school girls. We want to make sure that they have a sustainable, healthy, and a hygienic product. We also do a lot of women in mining because of the women in mines that spend hours in the mines, and they have no proper sanitary or sanitation facilities to actually change their sanitary products and the menstrual cup is the ideal solu solution because they can leave it in for up to 12 hours at a time. And then again, we want to protect our environment because everything is about going green, saving our environment and our beautiful planet. And we can only do that if we use the proper products. So back to COVID-19 and what I've been doing, and I would call myself being unstoppable during COVID-19. So I launched my own global talk show called The Red Corner Show. And on the show, I engage with women and girls from diverse cultures across the world to share real life stories. And why do we do this? It is very simple to empower, inform and inspire others, because I feel everybody has a story to tell. And your story could change someone's life and make a huge impact and a difference. 
And, you know, the world is faced with so much of dilemma right now where people are just so negative with COVID-19 and, you know, with GBV being on the rise and the rape victims, et cetera. And here we have people that come on board to talk about their real experiences. And I'm so overwhelmed with the response that I get on the Red Corner Show that I have a full inbox where people want to get on the show to share their stories. And I've also had success stories and I've had people come to me and say, you're doing an amazing job because I've been through this and hearing from this person that said X, Y, Z, I can now change my thinking and change the way I, I feel about what I've been through. And I'm ready to be on your show and I want to talk about my experience as well. And that's the stories we want to hear. We want the world to come on board and share because you never know which life you're going to impact. So from inception in August 2020, and that's just eight months, I interviewed over 120 men, women and youth from across the globe all sharing their incredible journeys and stories. So if you want to come on board as well and share your journey with me, please feel free to contact me. I was recognized as one of the global ambassadors by US best-selling author, Dr. Larita Rice Barnes for her book, My Pink St it's actually our book, My Pink Stilettos, a book that is now available on Amazon. It's co-authored by 17 women from five different continents. And this was released in 2020 in view of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Amazing read. Uh, my chapter in the book is Keep On Keeping On, where I touch on my life um, as a single parent and raising two kids and also talking a little bit about the sudden death of my husband. So if you would like to get your hands on this book, it's available on Amazon and you can also get the Kindle version, um, which you can read on any device. So I would suggest get that because these are real life stories as well that you can read. So being inspired by well-known trailblazers, I've written over 250 quotations myself to date and I hope to publish my third book in the near future and I'm looking at the 2022 year. I want to say a special thank you to my mentor, Professor Caroline Makaka from Ladies of All Nations International. I met this incredible woman in 2017, and we have stayed in touch ever since. She continuously motivates and inspires me, and she is the person that I want to be one day. And, you know, it's so important for us all to have role models and look up to somebody that really inspires us and, and just upskill ourselves and do the necessary to try and be on that level. Um, thank you to Institute of Global Professionals uh, for having me. Um, this is an incredible platform and I've seen your work and I love what you're doing. And I'm so actually excited to be on this platform and going forward to partner with you in your webinars as well. We all need role models to look up to and um, Dr. Caroline Makaka actually never ceases to amaze me. So let's expand our thinking by thinking broadly and creatively in the spaces that we are in we can all continue to beat this pandemic. I just wanna take you through very briefly on the power of networking. And I think it's so important for us to actually network. Um, as a leader, as a global leader, I would say strengthen business connections because it's so important to stay in line and stay in tune with your business partners and with people around there because networking at the end of the day will increase your visibility in the business world. Get fresh ideas. And, you know, we can use social media for fresh ideas. Um, almost everybody is on, free, on social media. So we can use social media to grow ourselves and just raise our profiles. Advance your career because you never know where your passion lies. And I always say this, follow your passion, follow your dreams, follow what actually makes you a better person, what fulfills you, what energizes you, and what makes you dream bigger. You know, we must forget about the word dream big because we've been there, we've done that. Now we need to dream bigger and move ahead. Get access to job opportunities if you are not in the entrepreneurship world because there's a lot of people out there advertising um, upskill yourself, get more knowledge, um, just grow yourself as an individual. And, you know, having said that, um, over COVID-19, I actually upskilled myself in various spheres. Um, I've got the assessor training. I did project management. I'm now currently in the final leg. Uh, I just have, I'm not going to say months anymore. I have a few weeks before I finish my doctor in business administration, my DBA, uh, another sought after degree uh, by most. And I'm really chuffed to say that I've actually completed this, almost completed this journey. And I'm just waiting for that red gun moment. 
So get career advice and support. Um, we have experts out there. We have experts, for example, now with this free webinar, you're going to learn so much today from these other speakers that are going to inspire you. So you can continuously learn, build confidence, gain a different perspective uh, in your life, change your life, um, develop long-lasting personal uh, relationships and you know you can get an answer to every question that you have when you get up in the morning ensure that you have this fresh mind this thinking um, self-care is so important uh, try and get into different routines and just to better yourself and make yourself comfortable because we all know your mental health is your wealth and then find the job that you love you know it's all about passion fulfilling your dreams uh, being passionate about what you do, because remember, at the end of the day, we all work pretty hard and we want to end up in a job that we actually love. We want to be in and we want to make an impact and a difference. And at the end of the day, focus on ourselves at all, as well. So I would say, you know, have a role model, grow yourself, latch on to great leaders and role models, because remember, everybody started from humble beginnings. I started from humble beginnings. Um, you know, I can tell you a story that when I was in school, um, we were actually average, but I never had the second pair of school socks um, to wear to school. And I used to attend school. I used to get to school and um, after school, get home, wash my socks. And if it didn't dry for the next day, then I would iron it to make it wearable for the next day. So, you know, I would say just... Focus on your dreams and focus on what you actually feel is going to add value to your life. And the world is your oyster. And that's my take for today. And I wish and hope that I inspired all of you. And I look forward to hearing from you. You can find me on all social media platforms. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sherrilla, because your incredible journey and a lot of experience gives us encouragement. Thank you so much, ma'am. Women can do Thank anything you. if she wants. And yes. there is a hard time for every girl. And sometimes school girls felt so uncomfortable, hesitate, shy, and so on. Uh, and your in initiative is really great and just amazing, ma'am. Uh, Thank you so much. And thank you for, uh, we just made an incredible woman just like you and a role model. Uh, thank you so much for your tips. How can we be, we be a global leader? And I think it's really helpful to us. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your amazing speech and presentation. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on this platform. And I'm looking forward to hearing the next round of speakers. Uh, it's time to move our next speaker, Dr. Sherf Books, uh, Boozy. Uh, please give a warm welcome to Dr. Sherf, sir. Hello. Hello. Hiya. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, hi. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. Dr. Shamila, that was unbelievable. I don't know how I'm going to follow that, but um, you were amazing. And the work you do, I, I, of course, know you from many, many platforms. And thank you very much for all the great work that you do in the world. And thank you for having me. Uh, now it is yours. Thank you. Great. Well, hi, guys. Um, my name is... Dr. Saf Buxi, and I'm from the UK. I'm a, first up to thank uh, the Institute of Global Professionals for having me on this wonderful platform. And good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. I feel blessed and I've had so much gratitude for being here today with you to share my, my wisdom, uh, my knowledge and my experience and basically give you a message of hope because there is a way out of most things. Um, I'm from the UK and I'm a recovered drug and alcohol addict, uh, a recovered gambler. I'm a victim of abuse and trauma, uh, but now I'm a social behavioral coach. I'm an author, I'm a professional speaker and I'm an addiction psychologist. I also have my own radio and my own talk show on TV in the UK. But above all, um, I'm a survivor. And I think we all, can be survivors. Um, it's time to be masters of your destiny and not victims of your past. It's something that I always say. And my mission, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is to give those who are suffering a message of hope and to help these individuals transform their lives in a peaceful and, and powerful way. What I do as a living is I offer gifted individuals an authentic path 
to personal development and peace and serenity. I will guide you to experience an abundant life which will be filled with self-love, integrity, in alignment to your highest values. And I'll be talking a lot about highest priority values because I believe that is what awakens our leadership in whatever we do in life. But what I do is I inspire you to discover your self-worth and empower you to realise your dreams. Just like I did. I mean, come on, I was a drug addict and now I'm a doctor. Um, so things can change if you put your mind to it. Now, there's no, there's no tell us to my journey, uh, but I simply hope that I can help other people like yourselves become mentally, become emotionally and physically free along the way. So you too can become survivors and overcome uh, adversity. And I find it enormously, enormously helpful to talk about my my tragedies, my travesties, my adversities, um, and my subsequent recovery, of course. And my philosophy is that if I could help just one of you, you know, from, from going down the same path that I did, then everything I do will be you know, will be worth it. I've had the pleasure and the humility to speak globally. And as I've traveled the world and even spoken on, on, on wonderful platforms like this globally, I've been asked many, many times, are leaders born or are they developed? You know what? There's no doubt that some people from a very, very young age or young ages, you know, they can wake up their natural leadership capacity. But my observation is that everybody, you, me, everybody has a leader inside them. And sometimes it's dormant but it can be awakened. I believe the first thing we need to find out to awaken your leadership is what, ser what is your service and what is your mission? What is it that you would like to dedicate your life to make a contribution to others? Because <clears throat> a leader, a leader is somebody that is going in a direction and taking people with them. So what's your mission? When I came into recovery, when I came out of the madness, and incidentally, that's, that's my book. You can get it from Amazon. You can get it from my website, safbuxy.com. It's a book to give a message of hope. It's a book that, that gives people light at the end of the tunnel, that you can get out of anything. Um, so what is your mission? My mission was to be of service to as many people as possible just like coming on this platform today. What is it that inspires you most? What is it that you cannot wait to get up in the morning to go to do? I wake up every morning so enlightened and so empowered and so awakened. What is it that would make the biggest difference to the most number of people that means the most to you? I'm here to serve, I'm here to help people who have experienced some kind of trauma, experienced um, addiction, and addiction comes in all forms, not just substance misuse, we're talking sex addiction, porn addiction, gambling, shopping, mobile phone addiction. If I was to tell you today that I'm going to take your mobile phone away from you, you'd probably all look at me like I'm a drug addict taking the drugs away, right? These are all different types of addictions. So what is it that would make you the biggest difference to the biggest number of people that means the most to you finding out this is the first step to awaken your leadership the second i believe is gaining specialized knowledge and study in that area or surround yourself surround yourself with people with specialized knowledge that can help you fulfill that mission people like dr shamila and the speakers that are after us and myself, we have a specialist knowledge. Surround yourself with people like us to try and educate you and help you grow. Um, and the only way, you know, that's when humanity is, is at its best, when we all work together and support each other to growth. By you mastering it, you're considered a great leader from just having the knowledge, the specialist knowledge. So study, learn, and master the ability to fill your mind with great ideas. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't put your head in a pot of glue with some of it sticking onto you. Just like you can't put your mind in great ideas without some of it sticking. When I came in 
from all that madness that I was in. And I started studying and I started learning from the greats like Dr. Gabor Mate, TJ Woodward, Professor Bruce Alexander. I started learning from these people, Dr. John Martini, whose work that I do a lot of. And I, I put all of it together and I created my own, my own methodology, my own, my own process, my, mo my own modality called the Buxy recovery process, because everybody, everybody's recovering from something. And I teach that to my clients. I teach that to, to people who come to me who want help. People, it's not just addictions, people who have experienced trauma. Everybody has experienced some kind of trauma or some kind of setback. We work together and we get through it, through it together. The third thing is make sure you learn how to overcome the fear of speaking. And when I mean the fear of speaking, I don't mean speaking on a big stage. I mean the fear of speaking per se, full stop. Because if you are subordinating, if you are subordinating to other people, then you're minimizing yourself. If you play a follower, you won't be a leader. So step out on that diving board and take a risk by speaking. You only learn the flute by playing the flute. You only row the boat by rowing the boat. You only drive a car by driving the car. Speak up and share your message. Some people are going to like you. Some people are not going to like you. But you've got to share your message. Being a leader, you're going to be liked sometimes. You're going to be disliked along the way. That's life. If you can share your message and speak up and get your point across to try and serve humanity, to try and help people from a, from a place of from a place of love, from a place of humility. The fourth is learning how to sell. We're talking about selling a tangible good, learning how to communicate your message in a way that fulfills other people's values. Be charismatic. You've got to learn how to communicate in a way that in a way that fulfills people's values. If you help them get what they want, in turn, they will help you get what you want to be as a leader. Give and take. Be equal. Never put anyone on a pedestal and never put anyone in a pit. Put them in your heart. And the last one is to uh, learn how to save. Learn how to save because until you value you, the world won't value you until you contribute to yourself. When there's a leader who has the ability to govern their own life and master life and exemplify, the greatest leadership is exemplification, is to show by example, is to be that person you want that person to be. So by going in there and focusing in what is your spiritual mission is what inspires you. A desire to contribute to the world and to literally do something that's extraordinary and contribute in a way that is fulfilling and inspiring that changes the world. A lot of us, if I was to ask you how many, how many of you have a desire to go and make a difference, you'll all put your hand up because there's a natural born leader in all of us. I don't know how long we got left, but I'd like to discuss very, very briefly and exactly how that is awakened, because sometimes people don't allow themselves to let them out or talk about it. So just take a moment. I want you to go inside and look about in your life where you do something that nobody has to remind you or has to motivate you. You don't need external or extrinsic motivation. It comes from within. It comes from intrinsically. That's the area of your highest value. And whatever your highest value is, is where your natural born leader is emerging from. That's where it's trying to come out. Everybody lives, you do, I do. Everybody lives by a set of priorities, a set of values in their life. Things that are the most important to you to least important. And whatever is highest on your list, whatever is highest on your value, is where the most important aspiration and inspiration and is where leadership naturally emerges. Everybody has a leader in that area. It may be building a business. It may be raising your family. It may be a social cause. I have a business where I teach people and, and help people come out of adversity, empower people. 
I also have a social cause, which I'm a co-founder of, uh, called Healing for the Nations. Um, the founder is Dr. Tanya Simmons from, from Columbus, Ohio. And what we do, what we do is that we help people in, in Pakistan, in India. We help people come out of poverty. We feed, but not only feed, we empower individuals. We educate people. We build water wells uh, so they can you know, provide them with clean water. What we also do is, you know, uh, we teach English to Indonesian orphans. We're doing projects in Kenya. We're doing projects in Yemen. What's going on at the moment in Palestine is it's heartbreaking because it's humanity. We have to show love and compassion to humanity, work together, work as a collective, help people grow, not ridicule people. That is, you know, do things that are most meaningful to you, most inspiring to you, most important to you. That is your highest priority in life. And that is where you are naturally born to be a leader, whether it's business, whether it's charity, whether it's a being of service, do what is important to you. Now, if, <clears throat> if you live your life by subordinating to outer influences, to external factors, and attempt to please everybody outside, more so than not, that inner calling on the inside, you automatically suppress the natural born leader. When you live congruently with your intentions, your aspirations, according to your highest values, your natural tendency to be your most authentic leader and most profound person just comes out. So what I would suggest on a daily basis, and I think it's wise, I do it, is to make a list of all the things that you could be doing in your life that are highest on your priorities and delegate the lower priorities to things to other people so you could continue to fill your day with the things that inspire you, that are highest on your, on your values. And this will increase your leadership capacities that are natural and that are waiting for you to come out. Some people say, well, it's, you know, there's nurture, there's nature involved in leadership. And that's true. Of course there is. But some people don't learn what their highest values are and they suppress it. And therefore they think that they don't have that leader in them. And others wake it up and discover it and move forward without it. But you can do it consciously. The Boxy Recovery Process, I can help you awaken your leadership. I can help you come out on the other side. I can help you look at both sides. We are too often sold the fantasy of leading a one-sided world. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no prey without a predator. There's no predator without a prey. There's no positive without a negative. There's no negative without a positive. When we're having a positive moment, we try and stay up there, but we don't look at the drawbacks. If we have expectations, we're living a nightmare. When we have a negative moment, we don't look at the benefits. Because if we stay down there, we're living in a rut. We're staying in that rut. We've got to bring everything to an equilibrium. Only then we can have a life of inspiration. Only then we can have a life of fulfillment. Only then we can awaken our leadership. So prioritize your daily action. Look, look at the things that are truly most inspiring, most important to you, and figure out a way of delegating the things that are lower on your priority. If you're in a job right now, you may want to stop and reflect and ask, how is whatever I'm doing going to help me fulfill my highest value? Some people are doing things that are not important to you, but they're doing it because they, you know, for some reward or to avoid some kind of punishment. Eventually you'll become resentful. Eventually you'll become bored. You'll procrastinate and you'll be living that nightmare. If we are doing things that are highest in our priority values, we will be inspired and we will awaken our leadership. So you can see it's not, it's not what makes you inspired. It's not something that comes in the way. You want it to be on the way. So increase the probability of building leadership tendencies is you. Automatically do high priority things. And if you do that, you'll build your self-worth, self-love, you'll build your competence and you'll get more innovated. You'll get more creative and you have more of a powerful influence and the ripple effect on the world. And do not underestimate the significance of what the ripple effect is because when, you, when you're authentic, when you're humble, because everybody wants to be authentic and live according to your highest values and then you can be that leader. You give exemplification, lead by example, and you give permission for other people to do the same. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to end by saying one thing and one thing only. 
is that if we live by our highest priority values, we are inspired and fulfilled to do what we want to do. And we will do it with, with self-love, self-worth, no motivation needed. It comes from within. Look at both sides of everything. Yeah. Because if we're sold this one sided fantasy that there's no, that there's no negative without a positive, no positive without a negative, we will be living a nightmare. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, the Institute of Global Professionals. You can find me on www.safbuxy.com. You can get my book from there, Out of the Madness. You can contact me uh, through all the social media contacts. I'm here to help. I'm here to serve. I'm here to make a difference. Transformation comes when you look at both sides. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This marvelous speech I ever heard from you. I just feel energetic and because your every words inspire and motivate us. Thank you, sir. We are leader of your, our own life and we have to awaken it. And first, we have to value our inner self. And thanks, sir, for you sharing your intelligible knowledge with us. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. It's time to move our next speaker. Our next speaker is Adobe Ma'am. Adobe Ma'am. Hello, Ma'am. Hello. Warm welcome to our Adobe Ma'am. Should I do this stream yet myself? Okay. Hello, Ma'am. Hello. Oh, now I stay with yours. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, Ma'am. Hello. Yes, Ma'am. I. You are audible. Okay, can you say, hello everyone, am I live now? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Am I live? Yes. Okay. Hello everyone, I'd like to say thank you to the Institute of Global Professionals for inviting me here to speak today. I would also like to say thank you for Dr. Makaka for being a good mentor. Today I'll be speaking to you about putting your yourself first. I was born in Nigeria in the Igbo community. So I come from the beautiful country Nigeria in the Igbo community and married to a Yoruba man. And you know what, there are different tribes. There's always conflict. I'm a mother to two beautiful teenagers who has taught me that having children is not a walk in the park. Just wait till they are teenagers. I am also an author, author of the book, Reinvent Yourself and Discover Endless Possibilities. This book is about my story of surviving a traumatic illness and how I overcome adversity. I'm also a reinvention coach. As a reinvention coach, I help women to reset themselves and live the life that they want. I also help people with their mindset, teaching them how to recover from any adversity so that they can stay on the right path. I am also a survivor of five cardiac arrests, not 30 years ago, just four years ago. I'm the president of a company called Put You First. It's in the UK, because I live in the UK. Put You First was born when I survived five cardiac arrests and I was struggling to live my life. I had help from physical, like they changed my house, they changed everything for me, but I did not get help with daily living and how to do things. So I'd like to find out from you, from the lovely audience, um, the audience watching me today, I'd like to give you something to take away something that could immediately transform your life. And I'm so happy that all of you watching today will be able to benefit from what I'm going to say. First of all, I'd like to ask, are you a workaholic? Most leaders, what they do is 
do things all the time. They're on the phone. They're having their work. They even come home with their jobs. Those of you watching me today, do you have you found yourself doing that? Do you take your work home? Do you ignore your family just so that you can make enough money? Just to buy the biggest house, the biggest car? Who is driving you? Are you being driven by the, the need to have more accolades? Or are you being driven by showing up to your friends? Do you feel tired all the time that you can barely communicate with your family? It's all about work, work, work. Let me, let me share a story with you. I have one of my clients called Sarah. Now, Sarah was a very, very successful mother, but she has dizzy episodes. She's always falling over, always feeling tired. But her family doesn't know, even her employees. But when Sarah came to me, through my coaching program, I was able to use my reinvention program to find out all her problems that she suffers from. And we now narrowed it down to how she can have that space in her life to attend to herself. And that is why I'm very interested in putting yourself first. I also have Rose. Rose is like some of, some of us here. I used to be addicted to coffee. Just drink coffee to be strong. But do you know that you might be drinking coffee, but all you needed was just to step back. Step back so that you can actually be human. You are not a machine. Now, why am I talking about put you first? I am talking about put you first because, because of my story. Four years ago, I was one of those that was pushing things. To me, I was working as a health advocate. I knew all about how to avoid cardiac arrest, heart attack. And I was also doing my businesses. I had about four businesses. I also had my kids to juggle. I was just carrying on, carrying on. You know what? How would you feel if you were doing all this, but you've got the signs? I had signs that were telling me that I should stop, stop, stop. But I didn't listen. You know, God works in miraculous way. I was stopped by getting ready for Christmas. It was just putting up the Christmas tree that I slumped. You know, it matters where you slump. Because if I slumped in Nigeria, I would have been dead today. If my kids were in school, I would have been dead. But my kids have a holiday and they call the ambulance. When the ambulance came, I was already dead for eight minutes. Finally, I was taken to the hospital. But my journey of recovery was, was that they told me that I had suffered not one, not two, not three. I, I was told that I suffered five cardiac arrests. And on top of that, they wanted to switch my life support off five times. Now, how would you feel if you hear such a thing? I had some of them in my coma. I was in coma for two months. Meanwhile, they were asking my family that they want, they should sign. My family should sign because they don't think I'll be able to talk. I would, whether I'll be able to even see. They were right because they couldn't resuscitate me properly. If you were part of my family and they ask you to sign, would you sign? Or if it's a member of your family, would you sign? That is why I had to reinvent myself. Because when I recovered and I heard all the drama that has gone on in the hospital, 
I just wanted to be given an opportunity to live because being alive is when you can make a difference. Then I remembered I had all the signs of burnout. Two weeks before that, I kept shaking. I was shaking uncontrollably. Of course, the ambulance came and I said I was fine, but I didn't listen to my sign. You have to take your, you listen to the signs because then that is the difference between your staying alive or just living like a vegetable. What I'm sharing today is about how you can get some space back in your life. Because as very busy leaders, those in leadership, we do so much, so, so much that it's difficult to get space back in our life. And also to find the balance. When you find the balance that you want in your life, it will make everything so easy. How many of you have tried so many things to find balance? You go to yoga, you go to this, you try this. It's not about trying many things. Some even buy Lamborghini thinking that that will help them. No. What you need is starting from the heart. You have to learn to self-regulate. You have to put yourself first. So there's plenty things you can do in order to have a work and life balance or even a relationship balance. What are they? Also, I also like to tell people that do a lot of training, just some managers, some leaders, you do lots of training. You are sending your people on training courses. They do so many things. Some people just do training after training. And still, they are, they do, they don't show anything for those training. They're still where they are. And sometimes the managers say, Oh, we are wasting our money on training. You haven't done anything. But you know what? The secret is by showing them because not everybody can just learn and, and put into practice. You need to engage with them, find out what they've learned from their training so that it will help them. And as a leader, if you are a manager in an office or you have your children, after they've learned everything, you have to show, you have to tell them, find out what they know. If they are not able to do it, you can hire teachers to help them. If it's an office for global leaders, your staff that have been on training, they also need to prove that what they have learned, they can actually assimilate and show it by having a session where you show them or you get somebody to show them. And in that way, the content they've learned can be easily translated. How many of you have been to some training and after two weeks or six months, you forget everything? You know why? It's because it hasn't been translated into what you haven't translated what you learn into practicality. So, like what I what I noticed when I had my my heart attack or cardiac arrest, what happened actually was that I was consuming so much content, having so many things in life. We can only do so much. We can do what just putting things into perspective. So today I'm going to give you some prescriptions from what I have learned and how you can even become better. So my tips for juggling, putting you first is this. Number one, learn to break things down. Yes. Break things down and build routines. For instance, if you have to go shopping, write that report, cook, or clean the house, or take your children somewhere, you have to break it down. Which one is more important? Or you can have a routine where you wake up early. How many of you had woken up? They have so many things to do. Because you have them there, you are not even able to do one at the end of the day. But if you break them down, let me explain. You can say, um, 
I have to wake up at 5 a.m. to start my report so that I can be ready for the second task. If you do that, you can actually achieve some. Number two, know that you are not indispensable. If you are one of those that have deadline upon deadline, you are worried about your boss, worried about the family, throwing your children here, throwing them here. One day, you might just crash. And that was what happened to me. Don't let what happened to me happen to you because not everybody survived five cardiac arrests. I was just lucky. If anything happens to you today, just because you have not been putting yourself first, your colleagues will only say sorry. People will only, only just show their sympathy. But you are in this world to make a difference. So by putting yourself first, looking after yourself, you, you have the opportunity to stay longer. The third one is the learn the science before you get burnt out. If you are doing anything and you're feeling tired, just walk, take a break. In case you don't have to take a break, walk breaks into your, into your day. If you are, if you finish one task, instead of jumping to the next task, just take a break. It could be five minutes break. You could go for a walk, go to the garden, look up in the sky. And doing that actually helps to break the routine and gives your body opportunity to avoid burnout and to relax and reset. Most of my clients, they use this successfully. And that's why I am an advocate of putting you first. The fourth one is don't treat your feelings lightly. Your feelings, if you are feeling in a particular way, probably you are feeling a bit tired or you have, you, you don't, you have instinct. All you have to do is to trust your gut instinct. They are here to save you because once you, once you trust your body, your body will honor you. You will not crash out by, by having fainting, fainting or stroke or just feeling unhappy. Because when you put yourself first, you are also helping your family. So today, it starts today. When do we start? Today. Because taking care and mastering every day is like a gift. Do you know that by looking after yourself, you're actually helping your family? If I had died on the day that I had the five cardiac arrests, I wouldn't have seen my teenagers go to university, do the exams. We need you. How many of you would like to be there to watch your children aspire, to see your dreams come true? We don't want you to live without getting everything. Just treat every day like a gift. It doesn't matter what you didn't finish yesterday. Today is a gift and just live through it. So my story is in my book. If you want to know more about my story, my book is called Reinvent Yourself and Discover the Brilliance Within You so that you can create infinite possibilities. It's on Amazon. That's my lovely publisher holding my book there. Her name is Lily Patrasco. So what I'm sharing with you today is that if we put ourselves first, we are more likely to achieve more. Because can you imagine looking after yourself? You will look great. Your mind will be able to process better. And also you don't feel that somebody is using you. And you can even think. Because by the time you put yourself first, you can achieve more. I used to think that putting yourself first is selfish. I'm one of those that don't like putting myself first because I want to serve. But you know what? If you keep serving people, serving, serving, you will burn out and you are no use to yourself or even your family. So from today, put yourself first so you can be used to everybody, even your family. So... You can check more about my about me on uh, Amazon by getting the book if you want to know more. And these are my contacts. Adobe or Nikweli. 
and um, that's my website. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, and on YouTube, Reinvent Yourself TV. So I'd like to say thank you. I hope this has brought some thinking to, to you so that you can put yourself first. Audience, imagine putting yourself first every day. It's like a car. If you don't fuel the car, it's not going to be able to move. So by putting yourself first, we're just filling your body so that you can serve others. Thank you. What a lovely and super presentation, ma'am. And you, I am really sorry for your struggling story. I believe you you able to give beautiful insight on this topic and the participants got the important takeaways. Thank you so much, ma'am. Giving you Thank valuable you. time and sharing your knowledge with it story and it is time uh, thank you so much and it is time to move our prestigious next speaker dr rita please give a warm welcome to dr rita ma'am hello ma'am hello good evening uh, from india and greetings to everybody uh, around the globe and uh, thanks for everyone who's come online to watch us and hear us out i am privileged to be a part of this show and uh, very very humbled to be amongst such wonderful speakers who have done so much in their life and are uh, illuminating themselves and the people around uh, them and the world and leading the way um, leading is of course uh, something that we when we say we are global leaders uh, in today's world the world indeed is one small family we have said it in india earlier that uh, we say vasudhaiv kutumbakam and vasudha is the earth and kutumb is a family the earth is indeed a family i am extremely uh, grateful to dr caroline makaka who has uh, uh, you know helped me to uh, spread out to uh, this platform because uh, it is through her that you know we we, we 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 come forward and uh, talk about what we have done in our lives and uh, she's been uh, really truly very very phenomenal and a very very inspiring leader in its truest sense um uh, as a leader i must say that whatever we do in our lives in our little ways uh, we are adding to the collective consciousness of the universe and that really manifests itself and uh, spreads out and somehow we see it all coming back to us i am dr rita jarath i am uh, an ifbb pro uh, athlete international athlete ifbb is the international federation of bodybuilding i am one of the first few women from india to compete internationally i am very grateful and very proud that i have represented india on world stage and um, actually put women's bodybuilding on the world stage uh, as i when i started there was there were hardly any women <coughs> competing and uh, after uh, nearly two decades now of uh, exercise and training i am now an ifbb pro international uh, judge and uh, so uh, very, i'm very very grateful that um, i am today uh, you know because i have been there right since uh, so many years i'm able to show the light and uh, help uh, and mentor a lot of women athletes who come forward not just in bodybuilding but also in fitness and uh, uh, health and wellness um in in india it's very very relevant because uh, uh, the health and fitness uh, of women in india is uh, very very compromised uh, because uh, women have been uh, you know in a, not a prioritized for them household work has been a priority not just because there's a, a societal obligation and pressure but also because how they uh, have perceived themselves because that's how they've been mentally conditioned and their priorities is never themselves uh but it is in fact it should be the other way around as we know that if a woman is healthy and strong it will definitely reflect in the rest of the family um when i was born uh yeah, i was born to a um, to my mother who had schizophrenia at that time and uh, she fell very sick and uh, so uh, 
you know, uh, I I was uh, very very isolated right from the beginning, and uh, I I worked very hard. I was very ambitious, and uh, I was doing my uh, physics honors from uh, the Delhi University Hindu College. Uh, but um, uh, because of my circumstances, I got married, and uh, uh, I really look forward to bringing up my child very well and uh, pursuing my further studies in a big way. And uh, you know, I was academically very, very, uh, very aligned academically. Uh, but uh, my son uh, was diagnosed with autism, and uh, that was way back. He was born in 1988, uh, many years ago, and so um, uh, in the beginning. I was devastated and uh, uh, we didn't have any access to knowledge. Obviously, we all know that in the 80s and 90s, we didn't have Google or uh, such things. And uh, all I could read at that time was Encyclopedia Britannica. That's what I used to read for information and knowledge or for guidelines. And um, I wrote to my uncle in New Jersey uh, who sent me uh, a lot of literature because there was hardly any awareness about this uh, disorder in India at that time. And um, it was just very binary in India that a person is either insane or not. <laughs> there were no disorders, there were no spectrums. Uh, people wouldn't think like that. Uh, fortunately, now there has been a great paradigm change. But at that time, it was very, very difficult. And uh, once he sent me the literature, I actually did my education all over again. And I learned that even if you do not have an instinct, you can you can break anything into micro baby steps and learn and conquer every baby step the bit by bit. And uh, nothing is truly impossible. So, um, uh, you know, long things cut short. He went on. He, he was told he would not be even able to speak at one point of time. And I really thought he doesn't have the instinct. But then uh, uh, it was a huge, long, massive journey. And then he went on to do his uh, graduation and his post-graduation uh, from uh, London and then from Leeds Metropolitan University eventually. And uh, he did his certifications in multimedia computing. Uh, although not yet uh, uh, employable, but he helps me out in my business as of now. So uh, in that process of learning, unlearning, relearning, reconditioning, reteaching, um, I learned a lot of things. And it was when he was about uh, 15 years old that he, uh, I, I took him to a gym for exercise and uh, uh, you know uh, how they look upon women in India that we were not allowed to do heavyweight training and uh, I wanted to just uh, push it there that, no, I know about it. And uh, why should I be stopped? And uh, it wasn't necessarily rebellion, but I thought that uh, I wished to take it as a cause that what women's health and fitness uh, should mean to the society, what sports should mean to the society. And uh, I traveled to many countries. I studied about it. I qualified myself. And then um, I competed in uh, you know, national and international bodybuilding contests. And that really <coughs> set the path for hundreds of girls, especially in India. And uh, so today I get a lot of love from all those girls, uh, you know, who... Uh, uh, who look upon me that you know it's really really possible and i actually started at a later age in fact when i won my overall championship and pro cards i was uh, you know in already in my late 40s so uh, uh, there were a lot of apprehensions about uh, women competing and uh, now we have uh, like hundreds of girls it's, a, it's 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 completely changed especially in the last uh, 5 years um so uh, uh, one thing I wish to say, the essence of this is that even uh, my journey started with just teaching my child a bit and uh, teaching him to exercise, teaching him to study. And uh, here I am, you know, as an example that all these things are possible. And uh, I was being on an international stage and uh, uh, bringing it forward. Fortunately, God has been very kind to me that I have had platforms where I am, you know, able to, um, uh, you know, come forward and talk to a lot of people in the sporting world. 
and uh, you know and health and fitness platforms and to 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 make people realize that um, health and fitness should not be uh, you know based on myths and uh, hearsay you know you need to educate yourself uh, go to an educated professional and understand uh, that sports and health and fitness involves uh, biochemistry and uh, psychology uh, kinesiology physiology anatomy and so on it's an all encompassing uh, sport and um, so i have been able to talk about it and so when my little journey started just by teaching my child and doing nothing else for myself not making a conscious effort to go on social media and get thousands of followers i was just doing something very tiny in my house in isolation and making trying to excel in it because i wanted it for my child as a mother and that goes on uh, that kind of has uh, you know um, uh, gone one step ahead on its own that today hundreds of mothers who have children with autism and they have uh, like 2 years old and 4 years old and they feel that they are told again by medical professionals that uh, you know you cannot give up your life uh, just let it be the way it is and so when they hear about me uh, lots of parents they come back to me and um, i'm invited to give talks uh, to parents uh it is extremely gratifying to tell them that look this is possible that a child uh who who you know maybe uh, god has not really gifted can become this just by a mother's intervention without even any uh technical knowledge uh but you just have to have the passion uh a, a woman in her 40s can go in her um you know on an international stage represent her country all alone without the support of a federation and compete with 20 years old 20 year old and win a medal um i'm also a bharatanatyam dancer i'm studying it and i'm doing a research and writing a book on how to uh converge these things together uh one of the examples i would like to give is that we have a book called natya shastra and which has the essence of all the four vedas and uh, the indian council of cultural research uh, kind of has uh, and you know helped a lot of scholars from across the world artists and uh, performers uh, to come forward and study uh, we see that um, uh, the natya shastra actually has uh exercises which are similar to the bench press and squats and everything that we do in bodybuilding um uh, so when we have a multi pronged approach in fitness when you're doing bharatanatyam and i'm also a, a kalari poet student you know that's a martial art from kerala it's an ancient art which was created by lord parshuram so when you when you get all these things together um you know and there is an amalgamation and convergence in it and you study it uh whereas these arts also have in a certain sense yoga and meditation uh, embedded in them um you have something you know which is extremely beautiful so just by being uh, very very passionate about what you do and loving what you do you create something new you study you research and then you give it back to the world you're already a leader without even trying to be a leader it's the world that comes to you um so uh, my message is that in today's world that we have the uh, support of technology we have seen that uh, in the last one and a half years uh, i have actually ended up working a lot more and widening my horizons uh, in today's world that uh you know earlier we were spending a lot of time on uh, commutation and uh, uh, you know uh, we were restricted to physical presence but we have understood so well that this is a great possibility and it can actually be done um even post this unfortunate uh, pandemic and uh, we have come together uh you know uh, really the go- the world is a a uh, global village it's a, it's a, it's just one family and um i i realized a lot of this from loni that 
uh, you know, when we when we women get together and we talk about um, ourselves, we see we have we have the same human emotions. They are so universal. As a mother, as a sister, as a daughter, we have the same the same uh, human emotions and uh, uh, you know the same apprehensions, uh, same struggle, uh, same drive to excel and succeed. And uh, so we we respect and bow down to. Uh, each one of us who is contributing in his own respective ways and we support and enhance each other. So together we grow. Uh, that's a great organization and uh, uh, it's amazing work being, of course, done by Dr. Caroline Makaka because uh, we would have just continued to do uh, uh, these in our own little world. Like I'm, I might be very known, very well known in the health and fitness fraternity and my, my, pers my particular field in India. Uh, but uh, uh, when people from different fields get together, we see that there is uh, a universality in everything the way we work and uh, we, we come across even possibilities of uh, B2B solutions uh, where we can support uh, uh, each other. And we are leaders. We have people who look up to us in our own ways. Uh, so, you know, we can really grow together and uh, truly contribute to the world in a much bigger way with all the work and knowledge. Uh, so it's time uh, to give back uh, to the society. And um, I'm, of course, authoring a book right now, working on it. I'm mentoring a lot of my students and my clients. And uh, being an IFBB international judge, I'm the only judge right now in Asia, Southeast Asia, as a woman. And, um, you know, uh, it's very gratifying when women athletes, they come on stage and, uh, you know, uh, they look at me and they smile that, oh, Rita Ma'am is there, so we are fine. It's very, very gratifying. And um, also, uh, uh, you know, I just wish to uh, thank you all so much. It's a, a very, very inspiring journey. Uh, of Dr. Saf Baxi, I must say, very, very inspiring journey. And uh, uh, Dr. Shamila, you're doing tremendous job. Uh, we need that kind of thing in India. I hope we can, you know, work and collaborate together. And uh, and surviving uh, five heart attacks is, is a huge example. I'm sure that uh, it will give a lot of hope uh, to so many uh, people, you know, who might just lose heart and be scared. Um, uh, I, I just recovered from COVID uh, and I had a, uh, you know, my auto inflammatory immune response was so high that, um, you know, I, I really had to be on steroid uh, with all the, um, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, fortunately, I didn't have any lifestyle disorders or comorbidities at all. You know, I've always been um, exceptionally healthy, but uh, sometimes the immune system is so robust that it uh, the body fights back and uh, so you know we have a very strong autoimmune response if you are if you are really healthy inside so that's the flip side of it um, and i really learned about it and i'm actually writing uh, you know an article in fitness guru that would be uh, actually be circulated in some of the hospitals in um, uh, india uh, you know, as the publisher, the uh, editor has told me. So uh, uh, when you come close to your mortality, you know, the series of emotions that you possibly go through. Uh, having five heart attacks and surviving is indeed a huge, huge example because it would give so much hope that everything is possible. Um, oh, and I really thank you all for having me here. It's a pleasure. I have not prepared today. I've just spoken from my heart and um, and I'm so delighted to do that. Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting us with your balls of wisdom and struggle and story. Thank you so much, ma'am. And thank, thank you. you for your contribution and your valuable time uh, from your Choco Block timetable and share your inside with us thank you so much and congratulations ma'am because you are a survivor of covid 19. Yes. thank you thank you so much uh, it's time for quiz competition so let's start off so let's go for quiz competition yes indeed <laughs> We will start our quiz competition after five or eight minutes. Uh, just take some moment. 
for quiz competition and please uh, share with your community and friends we are uh, for play with together and just joyful for us if we play and enjoy, uh, enjoy with with our friends
Congratulations to the winners and what and wow, incredible journey with our speaker, uh, Dr. Rita Ma'am, Dr. Shamila Ma'am, Dr. Uh, Surf Sir, and uh, Adobe Ma'am. Thank you so much. Um, this uh, amazing presentation of uh, now it is time for uh, Q A. Q &A. Uh, it's time for Q &A. Take you some brainstorming questions directed to the British speaker. Leave in chat. Uh, keep your uh, question on the comment box and we will read and deliver to this session. We will answer their them. Our first question from Sudan. Uh, how can we produce the ability of acceptance? Uh, well, this uh, question has been addressed to him. Uh, he didn't address any speaker, so you have to answer. Please. Okay. Uh, Dr. Sharmili uh, Shamila Nair, how can we get involved with Princess B. Menstruation Girl funding or a sponsorship for girls? From Dr. Karl Divani Ramdaun. Thank you so much for the question. Um, it's quite simple. If you follow me on social media or um, follow the Instagram page at Princess D. Menstrual Cup, or the Facebook page and um, send us an inbox message and we will get in touch with you. Um, the funding is usually done by corporates or NGOs um, across the globe. Um, so what they do is they buy the product from us and uh, we do the activation and training around the product. Uh, so we go out to the schools and we hand the girls the product after the training and activation. So that's basically what it is. Thank you. Next question is how to from Rodel Molina how to train a good leader. He didn't address any speaker. Okay, so maybe I'll take this question because somebody has to answer. Uh, well, uh, for being a good leader, it's something that has to come uh, from within. First of all, uh, when you are selling something, you want to reach out and give it back to the world. Uh, it is the confidence that has to uh, come forth. As uh, in, in his talks, uh, Dr. Staff Bhakti has mentioned that um, you you got to have the confidence to reach out to be able to uh, you know talk and mentor people. So uh, I, I, when it comes uh, from the childhood, I think. Uh, you know, we have the education philosophy of uh, Rabindranath Tagore. He says that a child must be given complete freedom so that he can uh, be himself, himself or herself. 
and uh, that actually generates a lot of confidence coming forward with arts because i have been in performing arts and i know that since the beginning when you come on stage and when you you are see i've come today unprepared so when you you are on stage that uh, initial hesitation should not be there there should be a desire to reach out to the world and give back what you have learned and sometimes doing something absolutely unconventional should be allowed something uh, i have seen examples where some people started something 100 years ago and at that time it was neglected but in the in so little world it it increased and magnified and that was probably carried forward as a legacy and then it expanded later on much much later on and then we look back at history there was some little uh, person in a village who just started it in his own tiny way so uh, definitely i just wish that uh, the 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 first question that came about acceptance but accept a person the way uh, he or she is and let him be as long as he is giving back giving something new and different to the society let the person be himself let a person grow accept that person and then everyone is a leader in himself Thanks. our next question is from roshi to ma'am shamila your innovation for girls monthly your was awesome but this is new to us so my question is the product as a virginity can this be used when lying down or sleeping thank you ma'am thank you for the question um it does not affect your virginity because when you insert the menstrual cup it does not go right up to your hymen it sits on the opening of your vagina so it does not affect it and we know that a lot of girls some are born without a hymen some lose it through riding a horse falling off a bicycle um etc um and yes you can use it when sleeping or lying down swimming gym any sport activity it's not going to move out of place because remember when you insert your menstrual cup it forms a suction and it does not move out of place at all so it is very really safe and comfortable to use and there's no leakage as well thank you our next question is from b joy uh, for dr adobe how can we control our anger in front of our subordinate thank you so much for <laughs> this question yeah by subordinate i i mean that you mean those that you are you feel that you are above what is anger anger is an e- emotion and that emotion can actually cause you to be sick so the best way that um, i think um, anger could be could be controlled in front of your subordinate or any other person is what they've told you it doesn't stick on your body if somebody upsets you it's only just an instance if you count up to 10 and um, walk away by the time you've actually taken two steps you find out that what they've said is not actually you they are also expressing what they've know what they are used to because some people the reason they are angry is because they cannot get what they want or the way they look at the world so just walk away because if you have to answer to all the people that are upset it's not you that they actually upset with it could be something else but you happen to be standing right in front that is why the anger is directed at you just like a man that's a boss that goes to the office if his wife don't give him food in the morning before going out he's angry and when he gets to the office he's shouting at everybody you can see it's not you they're shouting at it's just what happened to them so take it if your subordinates or whatever when they when they are upset with you or they make you angry just count ten take a deep breath or you can even count three but take a deep breath and walk away or face the other side and you will see it works for me all the time and it's worked for my clients Well answered, Ma. Uh, next question is from Eric Angel, Doctor Sir Brooks. Can you tell me about a time when you demonstrated leadership capabilities on the job, Sir, Doctor yeah. Sir? Thank you. 
Thank you for the uh, question, Eric. I want to go back to acceptance very quickly, so to, to change the subject. Acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. Um, when, I was, when I was disturbed because there was some situation, some place, something in my life that I couldn't accept, until I accepted that place, that person, that thing or situation, I didn't get any serenity. So acceptance is, is, is massive in my life. Uh, until I accepted my addiction, my trauma, and everything else, it doesn't mean you've got to agree with it, but accepting means it's the only way you can move forward from it, otherwise you'll stay in that rut. So that's the answer to acceptance. Thanks, Eric, for that question. When have I demonstrated leadership capabilities? Well, I think, as I, as I said in my talk, um, we have to exemplify. I think the, I think the best leaders are, some, are leaders who exemplify, who, who lead by example, who show how it's done, not just order or, or, or tell you how it's done. So I think everything that I've done, especially since I've come into recovery, because my work is such as where I try and help people come out of certain situations, try and empower people, I always talk about my story um, and, and where I've been and where I've, where I've come from. Because not only do I come from a personal perspective, I come from a vocational and an academic perspective. And I put it all together and I exemplify what I've been, what I do and how I do. I think, I think the best people who can teach are people who have been taught themselves. So I think that, that's how I demonstrate my leadership capabilities. I do it on a daily basis with my clients, with my workshops, in my book, on stage, wherever it may be, with my charity work. I try and exemplify everything that I do. Thank you, sir, for your answer. Uh, next question from Joy for Dr. Sharp. Um, how can we get out of unproductive workers? Well, uh, as I said, we, we, as, we as human beings, we all live by a set of priority and set of values, what's important to us and what's not so important to us. If we can awaken our leadership by concentrating on what's important to us and working towards that, what are high on our list, we'll be inspired. Uh, will be influenced and will be naturally intrinsically motivated to do it. If we're doing things that are not important to us, uh, we'll only do it to avoid punishment or for reward. So what the best thing is to do is identify what's important for the workers and put them in that role because then they will be fulfilled and inspired to do that. And people who are inspired to do something else, put them in that role. I think it's to identify what their highest priority values are. Thank you, sir. Our next question for Mark Adron. For sir, sorry, so for Ma'am Adobe, can you give me some tips to be a good leader? Because I am a future educator. How can I be a good leader to many students? Interesting. I like this question. Um, the tips to being a good leader is to first of all put look after your own health, look after your body and your own mental health. Because if you are not in a good place, as a leader, you can snap easily. And your, your, your people you work with will see you as you are angry person, or they will say you are, you, are, you are too strict. But if you are working from a place of, of contentment, so when you correct them, you don't come across as somebody that is harsh. You come across as be supportive and also mind your language sometimes when we want to really really like when i want to make my children do things i sort of shout at them because i know it's good for them so even if your staff knows it's good for them you're actually helping them it's the language you have to come from a from a way that shows that you are supporting and helping i use that on my children and that changes everything. If I tell my son, you must do this, he's not gonna do it. But when I come that, you know, how would you feel if you if you, if you put this here or if you do this here? They actually feel better. So minding your language and also making sure that you are rested and that you think about what you do. And also you have to praise yourself. Don't wait for your staff or people you manage to praise you. Once you are content in yourself by being sure that what you are doing is okay and also have a mentor sometimes when you have a mentor that you go to helps as well because that mentor will actually help guide you so we all need guidance me being here today i was here because i've had a mentor 
And that's why I'm speaking here today. So but to be a good leader, look after yourself, put yourself first, have a mentor and mind your language. Thank you. Can I just add to that as an educator, you know, um, I would say communicate thoughtfully, be transparent in everything and take other people's um, situations into consideration as well, because I think that is so important as a leader, because you get you need to get to know other people and get to know their personalities as well. So just don't be judgmental. And um, yes, you'll go a long way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shamila, ma'am, and Dr. Ma'am Adobe. And next question is RV Velika. Uh, how to become a productive leader? Address to Sir. sir. So, so, uh, thank you. Thanks, RV uh, Velika, for your, for your question. Um, I think the first step to be a leader is in any field you are, I think you have to be or want to be inspired to be in that field. And once you're in that field, you will you will naturally become a great leader. But in terms of productive leader, I think it's about working as a collective, uh, working in communion with everyone uh, in your organization or in the field of your work, because it's not about, as I said before, telling people what to do. It's about being part of it, do it together, work together, guide each other, respect each other. There's so many ways to be a productive leader. Again, exemplification, I can't stress how important exemplification is to be a leader. Once you can show, once you can show by example, people will look up to you. Not only will you be helping them, in turn they will help you to be a great leader and you'll all work together. And I think a very important question I want a very important statement I want to say is never put anyone on a pedestal and never put anyone on a pit. Put them in your heart. Once you start putting someone on the pedestal, you start living by their values. Once you put someone in the pit, you expect them to live by your values. Put them in your heart and put them equally. That's what that's how they become a productive leader. Our next question from Manolita. Uh, as global leader, do you approve of long-term lockdowns? Is it really must to approve travelers to undergo RT-PCR or serving tests at the airport if a team to stay in a hotel for seven days just to wait for the result? I think it's for the sir. sir. Is that for me? No. Yes, it's about leadership. Uh, Dr. Rita, would you like to answer? I've been... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not passing the buck. But, um, Especially with COVID, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, having experienced COVID, yes. Well, I do uh, very much approve. Uh, you see, uh, there uh, we have we are in the middle of a pandemic, and we all are economic uh, lows and uh, you know losses. But right now, the priority is to stay alive, and we know how. Uh, you know how much uh, this this thing is spreading, and uh, it is a danger to your life. If you are if you are alive, you can do anything later. Now this is actually a great opportunity for you all to become leaders because we are now we can open uh, you know widen our horizons, and we can look at things from different perspectives. Actually, it should be a great great opportunity to become a leader. A lot of people in uh, during their travel community commutations, they spend so much of time. Why not have more innovative ideas? It's saving us. Uh, isn't it saving us a lot of money? Uh, so it depends on you have to reinvent even when there is no lockdown. And if at all, there was no pandemic ever. Uh, you would have to uh, recreate at every point of time. Uh, at every point of time, the world is always changing. It's forever changing. And unfortunately, we have this. And uh, let me tell you, uh, when I got infected for 15 days, I had not gone out anywhere at all. There was a national championship. And then for 15 days, I was at home. I was studying. I was just doing an online exam. And then I, I, I just, uh, you know, I had fever. So you never know where you get it from. And then you are going and spreading it out uh, for a little bit of convenience or for a little bit of money. No amount of money is worth it. I think the governments are very responsible. They have issued guidelines. Uh, they all know that everybody is suffering. They're trying to open up. They're trying to help us. I think we must definitely follow the guidelines. 
perfect question and the session indeed well answered by four speaker dr shavala ma'am or uh, adobia ma'am dr sharp sir and dr rita ma'am thank you so much ma'am and sir also and don't forget to uh, our viewers uh, don't forget to collect your e certificate from our website or by the link mentioned below on after session get over and before pass goodbye let me acknowledge my alumni one and it is who has so much passion i can keep taught out the session dear listeners i am much obliged for you all from the core of my deep heart taking part of today's session i am confident and positive that you might have been pick up and learn something new today which will be sure in your life or your career growth my audio viewers i would now request to all please view leave a review on our today's session and also recommend in our page if you learn something or you get something from us um dear on look at to this spread the information for, to your friends and community i repeat again not to forget collecting your e certificate from our website or by the link mentioned below after the session get over we hope to see you all again in the upcoming webinar until then thank you brave the pandemic with smile sunshine warm and positivity Stay happy, stay safe. I'm your host, Umm Salma. Sign out. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you so much, dear sir and ma'am. Before we uh, close the session, I'm really cordial thankful that we have four living leaders right now in my in front of my eyes. Those who are really survivor. Those who are actually leading the uh, positive thought right now. like rita ma'am like uh, saf sir like adobe ma'am like dr shamila ma'am all are the leading leader right now who are doing their best and uh, when actually uh, when i uh, heard about the adobe ma'am's uh, story five cardiac attack on that time i i was just thinking about that uh, oh, what will be the health of the com commitment by us and uh, when uh, again when it comes the situation again rita ma'am she is also a bodybuilder and she is also athlete if she got the covid then uh, what what will be the happening with us maybe we don't still date uh, if you believe it or not uh, i don't i didn't went gym in for a day, single day and i didn't put a just push up for a just single push up <laughs> that it will i will see yeah, for me also <laughs> so uh, again thank you so much and uh, some people also asked uh, who is makaka ma'am because uh, everyone uh, ja, suggests the name of uh, mentor makaka so i saw that in comment section some of uh, participants asked who is makaka who is caroline makaka actually she is a mentor and she is uh, also a leader who uh, what who is trying to uh, in my sense actually who is trying to, to uh, do something for the community right now especially for women and uh, again sir, sir thank you and ma'am thank you so much for your time hope to see you again in another session definitely thank you Thank you so much Thank for you. having me. Best Thank wish. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank Bye. You too. Bye. For certification, uh, dear participants, is always the same process which you have to do. Just browse www.edugp.com and find the today's topic. Already. uh wish i shared the link into comment section and pin the certification link into chat box uh yeah maybe ma'am caroline makaka will be invited also to be a speaker to next session definitely and ma'am makaka is a uh, just put the comment in front of your comment <laughs> definitely ma'am definitely uh, so this is the process of certification always the same process stay happy stay safe and one more announcement is that uh, actually i missed it those 
uh, who win the quiz competition first second and third please inbox in our page inbox with your full name that we can issue the certificate immediately sorry actually i uh, missed it so thank you so much see you again in the next session thank you ma'am thank you thank, thank you bye 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 bye